So today we will do uh, uh, liability analysis using Excel. There are two ways you can uh, check the survey question. One is swipe analysis and the other is reliability analysis. Recommended can be done in Excel and reliability analysis can be done to uh, uh, for management purposes of taking down by alpha in MPS. Now, what happens is that uh, we do a lot of surveys, and surveys are basically opinions, and we convert opinions into because opinions, of course. Likert scale is very widely used on a scale of 1 to 5, and then to what type of uh, T test, the chi square test, and on what test on that. Now, Likert scale is an scale, and uh, we can use that will be actually do the total of the source in the response and the total of the source is taken as the ratio scale as a testing table and then obviously we use a string variable data ratio about the leads and robots now you know that the questions are good and reliable that is the first that is the hard item analysis what is it Now we know that item one is the 
in a survey uh, instrument question so here talking about these questions also one more thing that comes sometimes in survey you also have something called distractor distractor is a wrong answer now let us see what that does it mean and uh, for that let us cover up more points in the survey now what happens in a survey is that as i do the modern equation more questions should be medium difficulty and there could be some questions which are distractors distractors are usually questions which give you deliberate wrong answers options to distract you those distractor questions are very much required to increase the overall uh, reliability of the questions now obviously we have seen many questions options are two options are uh, one option is right and two options are totally wrong so that is better just to distract so we have a concept called distractor and this is a measurement of distractor distraction index today so what happens in distraction in this survey actually in the basic di so in di check the di distraction index we choose about 7% of the survey more than 27% of the survey is the source total so total of the source so again you know you can take one as high status you can five silence is set five silence satisfied and ac one it will not make any difference so you take the total scores of each of the respondents take the top 27% and take the bottom 27% and then we will tell i will explain how we calculate the di in a the total di distract index distraction index should be between point c and point e anything less than point c anything more than point e is not desired that means you are talking about moderate level of question not too easy questions not too difficult questions obviously anything less than point c is too easy questions anything less of point e is too difficult questions anything in between them is the is the moderate question easy question difficult question should be reframed or they should be related then again you go back and again do the survey now coming back to excel sheet as you can see now we have actually got this thing in place and uh, total 20 uh, questions 20 uh, 10 questions so the question is right so total uh, Tells me ten into so I do one is question one I do ten is question ten. Serial number one is respondent, serial number two is respondent. So out of this item of item ten, we will determine which are the two easy questions and which are two difficult questions. So the way you would just you go and just the total total score because this is the testing variable. and 
here sort by total score because total score i got in the string or string or based on the values and i will take largest so i just say okay and as you can see it is all properly sorted out the highest score is 41 which is responded from 5 and the lowest score is 15 which is responded number 7 now having done that let me select the top 27 percent and bottom 27 percent on the basis now, 27 20 is approximately 6. So, I'll take the top 6 and the bottom 6. So, I will create a cell here, which is say U30. U30 is nothing but top, top 20, uh, top uh, 27%. Top 27% of the source. Now, 27% of 20 is 6. So I have to select six respondents, six respondents on the basis of number of votes. So it is very simple. I will just say come and take the top six, two to seven, and take the average divided by six. I see because twenty-seven percent of twenty respondents is six. Now this is for item number one. The average score of top respondents 2.8 is the item number one question. Same I will extend all the questions. I did not take that. So it gives you 230, gives you the average rating or average meter uh, scale rating given on each of the items by the top 27% of the respondents. Similarly, I will take the bottom 30, which I call lower L30. And here, I will take the bottom 27% and I will take the Seven and bottom percent. I'll do the same sum take the bottom twenty seven percent, it's bottom six, and check out the average rating they gave item number one. It is one point. I explained the same thing on the question. So what I got here? I have got the average rating. I have got the average rating of uh, bottom twenty-seven percent and top twenty-seven percent gives each of the questions. Now we simply calculate the index which is a distracted index or this we can also call it discrimination index discrimination index i just put here top 27 percent average And the distracted index is something but the difference between the top 27% minus the bottom 27% divided by the rating scale. The rating scale is Likert scale. So I will divide it by because there are five rates. Suppose I take a dichotomous scale, then I will divide it. So, calculate the structure index. I will take two percent minus delta is divided by Likert scale, and I get. 
get this. This is a DI item number one. Discrimination index. Question number two is point two. Similarly, I send the results. And this is the time. I am getting the structure index or discrimination index of each of the each of the ten questions. Now, what is the DI index? You mentioned that DI should be to be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. This represents moderate questions. Less than point 0.3 is easy and should be replaced. More than 0.8 is difficult. And so all that I have to do is find out which all the questions Go to statistics. I want the item scale 
I also put in the scale pyramid related. I am doing crown by comfort just using SPS for the reliability plan. I will do the correlation and then I will continue. I will do OK. And if you see, in fact, we will just check what that is crown by comfort. Before that, let me tell you what that is crown uh, by comfort because we analyze the results. Uh, in SPSS, we will do non back alpha for the reliability. Uh, reliability is a psychometric statistics, which is actually used to test the internal consistency of homogeneity for both the performance and continuous scale. That is the beauty of it. It takes both the scales. Uh, it is not a test of homogeneity, it is simply a reliable and consistent. That means I will give a very simple example. If I give a survey, Send a survey to a respondent to let's say you and ask you a question in a survey and you take mark T in a liquor symbol of one to five. And then again I send the same survey to you after 24 hours. You should again take mark T. So again I am sending it to you after 24 hours. Start. Again you should take mark T. So that means you are consistent. So when I am doing reliability analysis, I am checking the consistency of the respondent. How consistent he is. That is what reliability analysis is all about. Similarly, when I am giving you a set of questions, I should get the same response from you every time I give you the same questions. That is that means that you are consistent in what you think. In your opinion, that means reliable, uh, other word for reliability is trust. That means you are trustworthy. Responded. Second is basically when we talk about the reliability in survey uh, in SPSS, we actually talk about two things. One is basically the consistency or reliability of all the items or the questions. And the second thing that we do is the reliability or consistency of the constructs. I will explain what is a construct. Uh, construct is basically a dimension. Suppose you are talking about, uh, uh, you are doing a survey. The first determines whether you are checking about a particular parameter about uh, the, the economic condition of the respondent. So you ask three or four questions. And that is all about economic conditions. The, the construct or the dimension is economic conditions. Then the next five questions is all about the educational background. So the next one should become education. The next third question, the third set of questions of five questions is about jobs, type of jobs that people do in a custom. Or you are protecting a raking cigarette in the survey of Islam. Third construct is basically jobs. And the fourth is basically of some other activity, and that is another construct. So, overall, survey could be a, of a particular topic, but that will have four constructs. So, each of the constructs will have few questions, and those questions are always similar. They will actually point out to the same thing. It should not that uh, within a construct, the questions are dissimilar. That means the variance should not be too high. Or in other words, the correlation should be very high. The correlation of the questions within the construct should be very, very high. Or if I'm just doing one particular construct and ask 20 questions on that answer, the correlations of all 20 questions, that is the respondents, responses, correlation, I think obviously, of the testing variable should be high. If there is a high variance or low correlation between few questions, those questions are basically not highly reliable questions. So when I get a high component of R, I can say that the case is excellent internal consistency. Kronbeck Alpha, named after Kronbeck, started in the year, it actually was 1952. Before that also there were other ways of measuring that. But this is very uh, reliable because it takes care of dichotomous and as well as continuous variables. So zero and one uh, binaries 
as well as 1 to 5 or 1 to 9, whichever liquid scale you take. The Cronbeck alpha varies from 0 to 1. Uh, 0.7 is considered to be a good Cronbeck alpha. It should be the overall Cronbeck alpha should be more than 0.7 because 70% of areas in schools, schools is considered reliable areas. 50% is error variance. Uh, score of uh, 0 is not considered good at all. Similarly, score of 10 is also not considered good. You remember the very easy questions and very difficult questions. Error. In very easy questions, there is no point. So, getting a respondent respond to easy questions. Difficult questions, people will have very inconsistent answers. They will keep changing the answers every day. So, what we are measuring in our reliability of research is the consistency of measure. And here, we are actually measuring respondents. And the instrument the question is we are measuring how the respondents or the people who are given that question are being are giving responses, their consistency. So, how do you go about it in SPSS? Go to analyze, go to take. To reliability analysis, check for the various uh, tests. There will be various tests of uh, correlation matrix between various questions. Come back, alpha should be more than 0.7 because 70% of variance in scores is reliable. Variance. I come back to my SPSS. What I have done is that uh, we have actually converted everything into scale. And now the data value, view, variable view. Now I go to analyze scale reliability. I have already taken all the items to this item 1 to item 10 statistics. I want item wise, scale wise, and also I will check the table where what is the product alpha in the, that particular item is deleted. Then I'll check the correlations. And this model is alpha, it's called product alpha. So as you can click the other model, before product alpha, there was something which is called split half. Then there's a government parallel, check parallel, but product alpha is more popular. Okay. So I get uh, the results which are coming in now. Uh, reliability statistics. First, look at the reliability statistics. The combat alpha score is 0.794. Remember, we said anything above 0.7 is very good. So I find that overall, all the items, these are all reliable questions. The respondents are fairly consistent. 0.794, should be more than 0.7, so it is reliable set of questions. Now, I will further try to find the unit and see whether I can do it fine tune. There is something called inter-item correlation matrix. It is like your heat map, where the diagonal is always 1. Like item 1 correlated with item is 1, item 2, item 2 is 1 like that. But item 2 correlated with item 1 is 1. 0.075. Similarly, item 8 correlated with item is 0.399. So, it is a symmetric uh, matrix. Above diagonal and below diagonal, they are exactly mirror of each other. They have to be. What I do in intercorrelation matrix, I simply check what are the negative values. Whether there is negative correlation. And I see item number 5. See item number five. I see all the negatives. I see four negative. That means item five is negatively correlated with many items. Like uh, it is negatively correlated with item one. It is negatively correlated with six, seven, eight, nine. Also, the positive correlations are very, very low, bordering around zero. There is item five. Whatever is the item five, or whatever the question of five, what people have applied that is highly inconsistent to what they have been replying in other questions. There is no consistency. Variance is there. The poor 
population is very low. Similarly, I see that there are two negative scores and they meet in but only pertaining to atom field. So I the suspect here. So wherever you see the low correlation, you will see that it will be pertaining to item number five. But let me look at item number one also. I see very low correlation. Item one and item one is minus one minus five correlation, negative correlation, negative five of negative everybody. Overall correlation metric of item one with other items is very, very low. It is less than zero or bordering around zero. Except item eight has been three nine nine. It is very low. So rest of the things I find it reasonably good. Uh, not open it. In fact, uh, the thumb rule is anything above point three in a inter data correlation metric between the items to be done. So I can just look at the inter item correlation metric and clearly see the item five and item one. They are the problem questions. And they should be achieved. Now there is a very important uh, table for item total statistics. Now, what the item total statistics tell you, it tells you that what will be the chronic alpha if that particular item was removed. Now, look at look at the chronic alpha. The chronic alpha original chronic alpha is 0.794. Now, look at it very carefully. It says that if item number one is removed, look at this item total statistic. If item number one is removed, compact alpha actually rises, increases to 0.819 from original 0.794. <clears throat> but if item two is removed, it reduces from 0.79 to 0.745. It reduces in all the items except. Item number one and item number two. So if I remove item number five, drawn back alpha will increase to 0 0.823 from 0 0.794. Similarly, here it will increase. Yes, it is reducing. So this gives you exactly the same results as what we did in Excel. That item number one and item number five will be replaced, deleted, re or re reframed. So I go back to analyze one. I go to scale. I go to level analysis, and I remove item number five and item number one. I that's is already done. I again look at okay. And if you see my new combat alpha. Is 0.854. Earlier it was 0.794. After removing item number one and item number five, it is increased to 0.852. And now you will see the intercorrelation matrix between the various items. You see no negative items. No negative items. And most of the items, almost in fact, during a couple, all are more than 0.3. Correlation is more than 0.3. Between items, item the question. Then we have the <clears throat> item total statistics and you see it is very consistent. Ground back alpha, look at the last score. Ground back alpha item it is very consistent. I mean, even item number two is deleted, it will be 0.818. On the current point, 0.854. That means it is going to increase. The current ground back alpha falls. This is 0.854. And if you remove any of these questions or items, it will be less than 0.854. So you can't place any other questions because the ground back alpha will reduce from 0.854 to the lesser ground back alpha if you take out any other question. So it, the final analysis that will come is item number one and item number five should be changed in replacement as per the SPSS analysis using product.